So today I want to talk about this beautiful 2013 Tesla S P85, which I have right now a little bit more than a year. And I bought this car last year and I was supposed to sell it because the prices were so high up in the sky for all the cars. It was in a huge demand, especially the Tesla, especially this one, because it was P85, low mileage car, free unlimited supercharged lifetime, which is hard to find right now because most of them falling apart or already uh, at the junkyard. So I bought it and I was supposed to sell it, but I drove it a little bit and I decided I want to keep it because it's so nice looking car and the money I paid for that, it was not that big. So I kept it and that's what I have right now for one year of using this car, how I'm feeling about it, how it looks like still right now and if I want to keep it or I want to sell it. So number one, I want to tell about the way it looks. The way it looks, you cannot tell it's 2013 or 2015. Some of the people, they might not going to say it's 2020 or 2013, 14, 15, because again, it's blacked out. All the chrome pieces, they've been deleted on this car by previous owner, not by me. And it looks so nice. Even the rims on this car been painted to the color of the rims, which is producing right now, or a little bit later than 2013 and 2013, those turbine rims you can get only in the silver color. So the color of the rims and the blacked out all outside, it looks so nice. So the front end of this car been exist since 2012 till 2016. And after they change it, they changed the hood, they changed the front bumper grill and the headlights. So, but before, uh, 2013, 2016, you cannot tell what year is that because it's all the same. But again, this car was blacked out, even the front end, the chrome was deleted. And from the back, it looks so cool. Uh, I don't like the chrome pieces because again, when you see the chrome pieces on the Tesla S, you're gonna say right away, oh, that's an old model. Probably the, the one was exist back in 2012. But again, not this car. This car looks so nice. Uh, I do like it a lot. So design of this car, which was produced in 2009 by uh, Henry Fisker, it still exists and it still looks so good. Even the new plate, it has the same body. Yeah, it's a little bit wider, it's a little bit bigger. There is a lot of difference on that, but from the side, if you're gonna put the plate or 2013 Model S, it's gonna be identical cars. And I think Tesla, by doing that, they're doing really good for the older customers. Doesn't matter if you buy the new one, old one, used one, you buy it from them certified or you buy it outside somewhere on the Craigslist, you're still going to be on the Tesla S, which is still in production. And you can buy the new one for 100 or you can buy the used one for 25, 30, doesn't matter. The amount of money I spent for this car over the year was not that big not that huge. So first of all, I did the tires on this car. It's about 150 a piece, so 600. I got the full set of brand new tires. So the brakes on this car, like I say, they have to market. There is plenty of different brands you can buy it. That's between 40 and $50 for the set of the brake pods. So I replaced them all around, which is really cool. So the old Model S, they do have a problem with side molding. So basically before, I think they used the foam. Over the years, it was dried a little bit. So, and the water started going inside, even if you're going through the car wash. But when you're going through the rain, the water just going inside on the driver's side. And what's happened with me, it was going to the brake pedal, to the switch of the brake pedal, and it's got corroded. And I had a lot of problems with that before I found the problem, I fixed it, I bought that switch. GM switch, ah, oh, no, I'm so sorry. It was a Land Rover switch for $40, original one. And I replaced the brake switch myself and I eliminate the problem. So number two, my friends, they did the moldings for me. So basically they took it out together with the rear window and they put silicone on it and they tape it back. And now it's good, it's not leaking anymore. But the dealer, I asked them how much they want for it. They say each side molding comes with rear window, each side $840, something like that, plus installation labor is going to be about more than 2000 just to eliminate the problem with leaking water inside the car. And they're not doing it for free. They're not doing it by recall or something else. So that's something you have to pay and that's something you have to know. So before you buy the used Tesla, even if it's old one, just put some water here and see if it's going inside or not. That's going to be number one. So the main concern all the people are going to face, that's the battery. So some of the cars, they do have extended warranty for the battery and the Tesla might gonna replace it. I have no idea how it works, but I do have an example. When a friend of mine with 200,000 miles on the car got battery replaced for free by Tesla, 
the big one, not the small one, 12 volt, the big one. And I was like, wow, how does that happen? I have no idea. And the car was over 10 years. It was 2013, same Tesla, but 200,000 miles. So am I gonna face the problem of this car? I'm not sure yet, but for now it's all good. It's working perfectly. And again, I cannot find the history of this car. So they might gonna replace it already before with the previous owner, but I'm not sure. And for now it's working super good. I have no problem at all. But the cost of the replacement, the cheapest one you can find, I think it's between five and 7,000 together with the labor. And they're not gonna do it the same way as the previous. They're not gonna do the sales. They're just gonna buy a complete one and put it on the car, take this one out and trash it. Maybe there is some people who do in uh, reconditioning of the battery because there's a lot of different sections inside and some of them might gonna go bad. You don't have to replace the whole battery, but again, it's easy way. And I think it's a much cheaper if you do so. So when it comes to the space inside the car, the space is pretty much enough for the whole family. I do have a three kids and I, and I can fit them on the back of the seat. So am I gonna put three child seats in the back and it's gonna be enough room. So the trunk area in this car, it's just huge. So besides there is some pockets on the bottom, you can open it and put some stuff like your charger, for example, it's sitting here, but you can put it on the side, you can put it on the underneath. You can even fold the rear seats down and you're gonna have a lot of space to put some furniture inside. And I did that, it is gonna work for you, believe me. So again, the space here, you might gonna put some bags, you might gonna put the stroller if you need it. Again, furniture, you can put it on, the suspension is gonna work, it's gonna hold it, don't worry about it. And it's easy to use it, it's easy to open, it's a hatchback, I do love it. And again, what's cool about that, so you have control over the, all the compartments from your phone. So basically, if your, if your friend or if your wife, your husband, doesn't matter, comes to the car and he or she doesn't have a key, but you have an app, so you can unlock the car, you can open the trunk, you can open the doors. They can sit inside and drive the car. Even this one, 2013, from the application, I can push the start button and the car is going to start. It's going to notify you. There is no key inside and the, my, the car might not going to start again after your trip is going to be over. But if you do have an app, you can always unlock it. You can always start it and they can keep going with no key, even for a day or maybe more. Just going to text you, hey, open the car. Hey, just start it. Let me go here. Let me go there. That's super cool. That's super nice. Thank you so much, Tesla. Thank you so much for not... Uh, for not abandoning 2013 Teslas and the people still can use it like me and still enjoy it uh, like me again. So the front trunk of this car, it's also huge. And if you compare this trunk with 2015 or all wheel drive version of the Tesla S, you're not gonna have that space inside. So what you can do with that space inside, you can put some extra, extra stuff. You can even put the dead body inside and uh, it's gonna fit. So believe me or not, I'm not a small guy, but I can fit inside like that and somebody can close the door and I'm going to be in. But the cool point, I do have a button so I can unlock and get out. So nobody can lock at me completely, but it has a lot of space and I do like it. Even I'm not using that. It's just peace of mind. You have it. If you need it, it's there. Use it. There is some cool options in this car. So first of all, it's a glove box. You can do the lock box with the code. So for example, I do have a code. I can put it on and it's gonna open it, right? It's, so it's open now. If you wanna put something, nobody can open it besides you. But if the screen on this car going dark, sometimes it does that, you can push the button and it's gonna open itself without any code. I don't know why, but they did it. So number two, that's what's not exist anymore since 2015, 2016 on the Tesla S, this one. So you can take that box out, you can put it in the trunk, you can put it in your garage or whatever if you don't need it or want to use it. There is a lot of space here. You can use it for something else. Even if you're gonna, uh, you can put number six passenger in the middle with no seat belt and he can put the legs inside, which is gonna be super cool. Right now, it's not exist anymore, but it was super nice uh, option. And this piece, made from the wood so even 2013 you do have some uh usb ports which is two right here and you can connect your phone straight you can charge it you can you can just put power source and you can charge your phone either or both ways but it's not exist on the back on the new one they are exist
So what I do like about this car when you're driving inside, this car has air suspension, same as the Mercedes. Basically, they took it from the Mercedes and they installed it on the Tesla. So Tesla, in my opinion, did a good choice. They didn't, uh, they didn't produce their own suspension, their own parts. I mean, some of them they are, but most of them they took it from something. For example, the air suspension, it's from Mercedes. The steering column is from Mercedes. You can see the gear selection and uh, the turn signal switch. It's all similar to any Mercedes of that edge. So while we drive in this car, it's smooth. I mean, there is nothing you can hear. Even my Chinese tires on this car not producing a lot of noise. And uh, even the high speed on the freeway. So it's pretty much comfortable car. The seats on, especially on this car, it's not me, but somebody else before me, they installed 2016 seats because 2013 performance, not performance doesn't matter, they are flat. So this one not flat. This one has a side, uh, side support for your body, which is kind of cool. So the steering wheel, the leather, the condition of the car inside, even if it's uh, 10 years old like my car, it's still in good condition. So there is nothing falling apart. It's not McLaren. There is no other piece on the dashboard which is coming out because of sun and the, the windshield, it's not tinted. So it's original factory since 2013. Uh, nobody touched it and it's pretty good. So there is no autopilot because it's 2013 version. And uh, what about uh, some updates? So updates I did on this car that's I replaced the cluster because the cluster was leaking so on the old model still 16 i i'm assuming uh till 2016 they do have a problems they do have a triple glass on the cluster which is leaking under the high temperature so california cars most of them they are leaking so the central display the middle one the, that's the huge ipod that's what everybody used to call that uh ipod car so that ipod i never touch it i never replace it but i i am thinking right now the previous owner he replaced that also because it was supposed to leak too what i did upgrade it's uh for glt and i did it at the dealers they basically put retrofit for a new sim card and right now it's a 4g lte which is good for your internet radio for uh for the navigation so this car still getting all the updates all the new software, wherever it's coming out, you can do software. And if it's connected, it is connected at my house. It is connected at, uh, at my work. You just take a new update and upload it to the car itself. And you can control from your phone still. So this car, even 2013, you can control whatever options uh, this car has. So you can do the charging. You can do the closing window. Not closing window. What you can do, you can close the or open your sunroof. You can activate your climate control to make it more comfortable before you're going to come inside. So it's it's really good for that. I do like it a lot. So this car still has a free supercharge and the free supercharge, it's a lifetime unlimited. So basically any new owner who's going to get this car, he's going to get free supercharge unlimited. You're going to pay zero for that. And it's super cool option right now. Only new model S and X, I think. They are getting limited uh, supercharge free for three years. So, which means I'm getting new Tesla X and it's going to have three years of free supercharge as a promo, but not lifetime. So all the X and S's before, they used to get uh, lifetime free supercharge and it was transferred with new owner. So it doesn't matter who's going to buy it, they're still going to get it. So this car, even if it's uh, 2013, but it's a performance 85, not plus, just a regular P85, it has range about 286. So what's cool about the old, old Teslas, like this one, 2013, you do have a AM, FM radio, like the new one right now, you're not gonna get it. You do gonna get only, you're gonna get only, internet radio so this car besides serious exam which is right now not existed on new cars you're gonna get radio you're gonna get am fm and all that kind of stuff i do love the serious exam radio that's why i'm listening all the time and it's always playing here that's really cool uh, on the new cars like i say you're not gonna get it anymore so let's see over the 
<clears throat> let's go over the car menu what we have here so right here we have all the control over the car you can open it close it so the brightness display i'm gonna put it on 100 for now but i'm gonna lower it so the vehicle itself you can you can do some other things like notification if the doors open close which is uh, usual for the tesla there is a lightning system how you want to do it inside outside there is a display itself so what else you can get on this car you can go to the software where you're going to see the car itself you can push it on it hold it a little bit hold it again <laughs> and you're going to get to the menu where you're going to put service you're going to put ok and now we go into service mode Ta -da! so what you can get here you can get service settings so you can do some other settings which is not available on the regular menu right here on the cluster you're going to see service menu and uh, what else we can get service alerts service alerts da -da 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 -da. i have no idea what is going on here but if you probably google it all the service whatever strat no feedback so I'm assuming that's maybe from the suspension, maybe the battery was just charged or something else because the suspension itself, it's working perfectly. It's going up and down and it has no issue. So the service fix, service fix, I have no idea, customer, maybe some information for the customer. But again, that's nice menu. You might going to use it, might not. Uh, software install, you can do it from here. Probably there is a brake, burnishing, door handle, calibration. So let's exit. So what else we can get here? There is a safety, parking brake applied, overheat protection. That's really nice if you do have a dock inside the car or maybe you, you lock your kit inside, but I wouldn't do that. But anyway, so you can do that. And when the temperature inside the car going to go more than a certain amount, like one of five uh, Fahrenheit, it's going to turn on AC itself. So it's going to cool down the interior of the car. So what about the control pedal? So what else we have here? We have a backup camera, which is only one because this car doesn't have a autopilot means on the sides, there is no cameras. If you're going to get sides cameras of the pilot, your backup camera is going to be three of them. So it's going to be side, left and right plus the back one. So even this car is 2013, 10 years old, the handling of this car during your driving it, it's so insane. I mean, even the high speed, you still can handle it. The car moves to the left or the right and brakes are pretty good. Even the brakes from this car, uh, it's a GM brakes. I mean, they use the Brembo system not only for the Tesla, they're using it for the Chevy, for the Jaguar, something else. So basically the, the brake parts on this car, the front one, you can buy it from Chevy Camaro SS V8 or some other cars. Just Google it and you're going to see there is a Cadillac, there is something else. The rear brake parts, you can buy it from hyundai genesis for 40 dollars i mean if you don't want to overpay it at the dealership or just buy the specific brand for the tesla which is going to be the same brembo so there are small brake parts on the back for the e-brake it's going to be from the jaguar there is multi brands jaguar or some other chevy whatever they cost like 30 40 dollars you can buy it. they're not going to make noise the brake rotors on this car I mean, they are comparable with GM, I think the rear one, the front one, I'm not sure because I never replaced them. The interior, the design of it, the way, the way it looks, the way it handles, the way you open in the doors, all the handles here, all the plastic pieces and all the, the aluminum pieces inside the car. It's so nice. And we are in 2023. It still looks good. It's still comfortable to sit inside the car. It's still nice to look at that. Even the handle, I think over the years they might improve a little bit but still this one aluminum plastic handle and it looks so good feels so good but again there's some parts like for example this switch window switch you're going to find the same window switch on the mercedes you're going to find the same switch on a dodge on the chrysler caravan or something else so means tesla they didn't design it they just took the existing part and they just apply for their own car so the panoramic roof on this car works really good so right now with uh, 75 percent we're gonna go 100 percent it's not making any noise it's going back smooth it's going it's closing smooth also it's not leaking the problem leaking problem as i told you before used to be on the side moldings because the tesla before they use a foam not the silicone and over the years that foam was drying out 
and the water start going inside so I already fixed that problem it's not exist anymore so at the end of the video what I was gonna say this car made so good so perfect and I think next five seven years maybe more maybe ten years this still gonna this car is still gonna be good and it's still gonna be feels like luxury even the sound system in this car it's kind of premium and it sounds so good and it feels so good so the car itself made i think for at least for 20 years up front i don't know how they made it i don't know why they made it but it's really good if you're planning to get one definitely get one uh just be aware of some little things you might gonna face you might gonna spend extra money on it but again this car worth every single dollar you're gonna spend on it if you're gonna get it in good condition if you're not gonna get it in good condition, you have more than enough uh, to fix it. Some used parts, some new parts, maybe uh, even the dealership can help you out. If not, there is a lot of people uh, who can do that for you. And I was gonna say thank you for watching that video. Put thumbs up or thumbs down, put some comments, I'm gonna answer you later. And thank you so much for watching it. See you next time.